cacti. Today, let's take a look at Rupsalis nevis armandii form megalantha. So I've talked about Rupsalis nevis armandii form armandii, which is really just the standard form before. And I've done a video on that measuring the flower. I believe the flower came in around two centimeters. And the flower for form megalantha should be pretty large. It is supposed to be up to four centimeters. So it should be a really big flower. As a matter of fact, it is the largest flower of any of the Rupsala species. And you know, the name suggests that. So real quick here, we've kind of done this before, but real quick here, uh, let's look at the standard form up against these, which are all form megalantha or very close to form megalantha. I guess I should hit on that for a quick second too, that a lot of times when you have forms, you know, so like something like Terra's where you have a lot of forms, there will be intermediate forms there. So it's possible to have plants that come in as an intermediate form where the branches are somewhere, you know, the diameter of the branches is somewhere in between the megalantha form and the standard form or the size of the flower might be somewhere in between there. So make note of that, that a lot of times you might have a completely kind of intermediate form between these two and it might be kind of confusing because you can't totally <laughs> place it anywhere. And that's fine. You can actually just call it out like that. So you can say, you know, it's it's Rupsalis nevis armandii. You know, the, the form is an intermediate. You can totally call that out when you're talking about the plant. So it doesn't always have to be the exact form. It, it's still the species Rupsalis nevis armandii. It just, you know, the form is just a little unknown. So here we have a little one, this little guy. So that little guy there, he's the standard form, the one that I just pushed in there. So that's more of the standard form. And you can see when it's up against Megalantha, the similarities and the differences. And here's an older one. That's one that I've done a video on before. And here you can definitely see, you know, the similarities, especially if we push this guy in here. You know, you can see the similarities and the differences there. Really, the plant will become pendant. Like, as you can see, this little one here for the standard form of Nevis armandii isn't quite pendant yet, but it will be. Now, these two that are in front of me are different clones. One of these, this one right here, is a clone that has yellow stamen. And this one right here is a clone that has orangish pinkish stamen. So where I have found that the standard form blooms rather readily, I have not found the same to be true for the megalantha form. I would imagine because it has to do twice the amount of work. <laughs> so this is really kind of a funny story because you can see the big bloom back there. And these, this is not a bloom on any of my plants. None of the, the cuttings that I have rooted or raised up or anything. This is a bloom on cuttings that I just received a little while ago. And one of the things that I want to do here is go through and kind of read the descriptions from the different, the different books from the Cactaceae, Descriptions and Illustrations of Plants of the Cactus Family by Britton and Rose, Volumes 3 and 4. Technically, this would be in Volume 4. At this time, uh, this species was discovered in or described in 1899. And at the time, it was not considered a form of Nevis armandii. So at the time, this was classified as its own species. It was classified then just as Rixalis megalantha. It says the plants are stout up to one centimeter thick, at first erect, but in time spreading or with pendant branches, dull green, often spotted with purple. Aerials are rather prominent, especially after flowering. Flowers are large, four centimeters broad, 
Petals 8 to 12, oblong, often shortly acuminate or obtuse, white, filaments erect, orange at the base, rose colored above. Style is thick, longer than the stamens, stigma lobes 6 to 8, fruit surrounded with white hairs, rather small, 6 millimeters in diameter, white or tinged with red, and the seeds are nearly black. It comes from Brazil. It says the island of Sao Sebastião. No idea if I said that right. Distribution known only from the type locality, an island off the coast of Brazil belonging to the state of Sao Paulo. This plant is known wild only from the collection of Dr. Lofrin, but is now widely found in cultivation, sometimes under the names Ripsalis grandiflora or Ripsalis nevasii. It has the largest flower of any species of Ripsalis. I have said many times that this, this is a species that quite often gets confused with Ripsalis grandiflora, especially the yellow stamen clones. And it is a species that a lot of times gets confused with Ripsalis flocosa. Again, especially the yellow stamen clones, mostly because most people don't know that it can have yellow stamen. Next, we have the Cactus Lexicon by Kurt Backenberg. Now this one was published later, a lot later. And this book is a little bit uh, iffy. It's kind of sketchy because there are a lot more species in this book than any other book. And part of the reason why was because apparently Backenberg when he classified things, he sort of did something a little bit strange, I guess, where like he, he basically made it so that there were more species than there should be. <laughs> so a, a, a lot of that information kind of just needs to be, you know, taken with a little bit of a grain of salt. So uh, what's interesting here is that in this book, it is no longer classified as a Ripsalis. So in this book, it is classified as a Lepismium. So here it is called Lepismium megalantha. It says the body is shrubby. The branches are in whorls, but sometimes forking. They are to 1.2 centimeters in diameter. The aerials are often reddish. Flowering aerials expanded with flocose felt. The flowers to four centimeters in diameter. It is yellowish white and rotate. The filaments are pink toward the base. The stigma is seven to five millimeters large. It's white. The fruit is white to pink. And again, basically saying it found in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, the island of Sao Sebastian. Uh, there's some more information here. It says the flower arise the flowers arise from the axis and thus leave deep cavity-like scars. I have studied various short flowering shoots. These were to two centimeters large with distinct scales to over two millimeters large, but the flower itself never developed fully. Although it was still recognizable as such, sometimes at the shoot apex. This demonstrates that the lengths of the tube and the flower are simply a process of reduction or stages thereof. Later on, the classification was changed. The new cactus lexicon by David Hunt. It says that it was actually changed and cited as Rupsalis nevis armandii. But here there's a little bit of, of more description to kind of differentiate it. It says the branches are relatively stout less than 35 centimeters by eight to 10 millimeters. The scales are prominent, usually purple tinged. Aerials are without bristles. The flowers are three to four centimeters in diameter, white with pink or orange stamen. The fruit is globose, 12 millimeters in diameter, intense purple red surrounded by woolly hairs. There's also some information about this on ripsalis.com, which is kind of interesting. So it seems like I'm finding kind of warring information about this. So I'm finding the botanical texts, you know, like Hunt's book saying three to four centimeters in diameter, but then I'm finding warring information from other texts, basically trying to say that there is only one ever clone 
of Rupsalis megalantha and the flower has to be four centimeters in diameter. Otherwise it can't be megalantha. I find that to sound very strange personally. <laughs> You know, like I said, knowing kind of what I know about forms, but I think that once you kind of get past a certain size in the flower and past a certain diameter in the branches, calling it megalantha, for megalantha seems appropriate to me. Maybe I'm crazy though. So we can see that all of these are pretty stout. They're pretty chubby. So kind of a funny thing is that three of these came from Cactine Hange as they were listed under an incorrect name. But um, this one was featured in a video just a little while ago, and I had unboxed it, and now it's kind of rooting. Here you can see these giant crater-like scars they're talking about. And inside of those giant crater-like scars, let's see if we can actually get into one of those. You can really focus. Focus! You can see the woolly bits that they're kind of talking about. So here's these big crater-like scars. And right after flowering, what happens is there's wool in there and so it'll kind of, you know, come out. You can see how short and stout these are. You can see in some places here, and I will say that this is a lot more prominent, like this is completely rooted growth. And you can see those purple aerials. See how purple the aerials are. Um, and then you can see there's a little tiny scale. It's super hard to get in there and see, but basically a scale is honestly a modified leaf and it's just covering that aerial. So it's just this little tiny bit, little flap. <laughs> so I can see that. And then at the base of it, I can see that it's very uh, kind of a purplish color. Looks like this guy is going to try to grow out of its end there. Um, here we see one that's desiccated. So a lot of times when they're desiccated, it's kind of weird because if you take pictures of a desiccated one, it can oftentimes look like a completely different plant because now, now you can actually see the ribs in the plant. You know, you can see it's cactus is coming out basically. <laughs> there we go. So here we see the ribs. One of the things that I was reading in those books, it was rather interesting that this could be both epilithic and epiphytic. So this might actually just grow on rocks sometimes. So that's pretty interesting. And you can see that this one did a lot of blooming. Here's another one that I purchased. This one in the United States from Groovy Plants Ranch. Talked about this before. I purchased it as Ripsalis flocosa. It is not Ripsalis flocosa, obviously. <laughs> You can see that it fits the description perfectly for Ripsalis nevis armandii form megalantha. Here you can see it's got some of this kind of like bristly growth here. And really what that is is just kind of a throwback. It's really like baby growth. So juvenile growth, you know, from basically like from a seedling kind of growth, you know, that kind of form of growth there. And a lot of times you'll get little hairs on that kind of growth. And here we see another one. This one came from Germany. This one is not quite as thick. You can see the new growth, the way that it kind of pops out there. You can see this one is a lot more like hangy than the other ones. Here you can see a lot more of that kind of juvenile growth. Very cool. Very kind of different. That one came from Oleg Cactine. Also did not really come under the right name. I'm getting this really fun like aerial root on here too. Here's a fun little aerial root. You don't see that all that often, I guess, on the Rupsalis. There are some of them that can do it quite, quite a bit, but you don't, you don't see it that often. So, you know, here you see, again, once when it's young and it's being rooted, it just kind of is upright as it starts to get a little bit more mature. It starts to hang down. Um, here's one that I've had for from Cactine Hage for longer. You can see how this one's hanging down. You can see the original growth on this was very, very thick. This growth was very, very thick. And here it's produced growth that is actually not as thick. 
So that's a little interesting. The other one from Heydrich I've had for a while. I assume these guys will get to bloom eventually. You can see there's not a lot of scarring on these ones yet. So there wasn't a lot of blooming on these ones yet. So be excited to see those bloom. And then here we have just these rooted cuttings with this rather gigantic flower. So these came from a collector in the United States. It's a little boy, as a matter of fact, it's a little 12 year old boy who collects epiphytic cacti, which I think is just absolutely cool. His dad runs an orchid business. So here you can see this rather large flower. You can see the base of the stamen is orange. When you go towards the tops of the stamen, it's actually more of a pinkish color. And if we bust out, well, actually let's come here first. So see how you can see that flower has pushed through. You can see little bits of flesh dried up. Well, I mean, let's call it cactus skin, really. It's the epidermis. It's kind of the outer layer there. You can see how it had to like punch through all of that. And here you see a bud that is forming that just punched through that sort of outer layers there. So it's kind of what it means when it's saying that, you know, it's sunk inside. The aerial is actually down inside of there. It's not really on the outside here. So the flower has to start forming down there and then it punches through. And the same thing happens with new growth. So a lot of times on these, what'll end up happening is that when they start to grow, they will actually, the tip will get stuck and it will form a loop as it starts to grow out. And it's really, really cool looking. That characteristic is actually the thing that classifies these into a very specific subgenus, the characteristic of the flowers forming underneath the aerial like that, or in hidden aerials like that. To measure the flower, we would essentially go from like tip to tip there. So if we try to get that tip at two centimeters, you can see this one's going probably just a little over five centimeters. So this one I think is probably whoop, measuring in a different, if I measure it over here, it's kind of a hard thing to measure actually. Nope, oh, struggling to get that lined up. Yeah, so I mean, truly this is over three centimeters. So it looks like it's trying to be like three, three and a half centimeters. So it's shy of the four centimeter mark. The first bloom that was on it was a little bit closer to the four centimeter mark. So it does seem as though there can be some variability in the blooms there. That bloom is just gigantic though. It is truly a marvel. It is quite a large, large bloom. And I pulled down, well, you can also see, I like to do the measuring on these things because I like to kind of, you know, point out the differences. So at home, if you're wondering, because size references are so difficult. So here, if we line this up at the three centimeter mark, oh, there's so much shadow, we can't even see it. There we go. So there, if we line that up at the three centimeter mark, we are getting about half a centimeter, maybe a little bit more, approximately six, seven millimeters in diameter, that branch. And so some of these, like this guy, where these branches were really, really, really thick. These guys right here. That's oh, just, got so much in my way here. <laughs> so these guys here, yeah, that is a whole lot closer. That's about point nine millimeters. So that's really close to one centimeter in diameter on those. But you can see there's variability there. There's definitely variability in there. And I did find variability in the bloom. The first bloom on this had eight petals. This bloom has 11 petals. I don't want you to think that if you get a great big bloom like this, but you don't have this many petals, that it's a completely different plant. That's not going to be true in this case. Here I have this beautiful this is a beautiful little elliptica plant. Isn't that just gorgeous? That is such a pretty little plant. But I pulled this one down because I kind of wanted to show, you know, more of a bloom that we're probably all a lot more familiar with. So 
the bloom of Rhipsalis elliptica when compared with the bloom of Rhipsalis nevis armandii from Megalantha. So you can see there's a really big size difference there. So this truly does have a gigantic flower on it. It is really, really something. If we go to the back side here, I like to make sure that we look at the back sides of flowers too. I don't know if you can see it, but there is a yellow coloration to this flower. There's definitely a yellowish color there. These cuttings are not even rooted. <laughs> they are just in there. They're not even kind of rooted. <laughs> so, but there you go. I hope that you've enjoyed looking at Rhipsalis nevis armandii form Megalantha with me. Thank you for watching and happy cacti growing.